guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on our YouTube account and we are looking at the Treasure Scramble. So a lot of players have been asking for comps within the Treasure Scramble. Now because the Treasure Scramble particularly is a PvP event, it does utilize a lot of the higher end heroes, which I know a lot of players do not have built. This is the reason why, again, I really commented over on YouTube as well as Discord. Um, building PvP kind of tier lists or even showing the teams that I'm utilizing is very subjective to the heroes that you have built. But we're going to run through this anyways, guys, and I'm going to show you all the teams I'm using. Right now we are ranked 100. I just changed up some of my Treasure Scramble teams to try to maximize the wins in here. Hopefully to finish out the season for the last four days very, very strong. So looking at our formation again, I'm going to go to my last teams, guys, which is right here. So we have 42 minutes before the heroes begin to scramble. And I'm going to run through the PvP teams that I have within here. So this is probably the most solid team that we've seen, guys. We have Sonya and Estrilda, which are two relatively um, older heroes. Estrilda and Hendrik right here in the bottom. Um, definitely two of the more original heroes. It does have Halos back here, the Awakened version of Thane. Again... PvP, Treasure Scramble, things of that nature are very dependent on building heroes and building a lot of the more powerful, more rare heroes within these comps. Sonya, I need built up higher. Awakened Thane could definitely use a few levels as well as Hendrik Furniture on here to really build this out within the team formation. Looking at our second team, um, it is Alna and Lucretia. So again, PvP is a little bit different than what we see within the campaign that we see in different game modes. We have crowd control for Pharrell. Crowd control, of course, wins a lot of battles within here. Silas for the attack buff and also for the immunity and the healing. And then, of course, we have Athalia in here, guys. This is, again, probably the second strongest PvP team that I have within the Treasure Scramble. Does incredibly well. Athalia can kill targets out very fast. Of course, um, Lucretia gets the immunity from Alna, and then we have, again, the crowd control up there from Pharrell. Looking at our th third team within this formation, expensive, guys. This is a big, expensive team. We have Mishka built in here with Zorath. We have um, Audrey in here. We have Laika for the super cycle, and then we have Zap. Zafriel absolutely needs to be built out quite a bit, as well as Audrey, guys. So we have a really big delay with these two heroes. So it is a unique kind of PvP combination between having Zolrath in here that is going to delay the entrance and then having Lyca in here, which of course is going to haste and energy the entrance, making this a very strong team, guys. Mishka, of course, the crowd control aspect in here. Zafriel, the crowd control aspect as well, allowing Audrey to maximize the damage. Now, with the damage heroes, guys, the better and the bigger they're built, the better they're going to perform. Having Audrey in with engraving, having her built with 9 of 9 furniture um, plus 30 signature item is going to make a big difference within this team. Again, this is another team comp that I absolutely need to build out much stronger than it is, but it still is working incredibly well. Getting into our fourth team. Now this one, again, this is kind of a variation of the old school God tier comp. So we actually had, I believe, Laika in here. We had Taylene in here. Um, a couple different formations. Essentially, Mahira was in here. But you can see, guys, we have Scarlet. Scarlet is our main damage dealer in here. We have Twins for the rotation. We have Aziz for, of course, the block, the Feeble Mind, um, and the attack rating reduction. Rowan in here, PvP. Rowan is still absolutely phenomenal. And then we have Desire in here for the immunity and for the healing that we see within this formation. Now, a lot of players talk about having the Twins up front, having Aziz up front. Because you're not dealing with level deficiencies, it does change formations considerably um, because of not only one, the team you fight, but also remember the enemy is on the same level that you are. So you don't have a huge, you know, 150, 200 level deficiency where the enemy just can absolutely pounce over your team in a matter of seconds. It takes a little bit more for the PvP aspect to really work. Looking at Team 5, this is an interesting one with Joan of Arc, guys. So we have Joan and Albedo. We have um, Merlin up here, and then we have Ezio. So essentially, this is somewhat of a crowd control team, somewhat of a buffing team. So Brutus will keep everyone together. 
Ezio is just a finisher, so once a hero gets to a certain level, um, he will actually insta-kill with the Eagle Eye ability, um, taking out that target, and he is also pretty tough to kill because he has quite a bit of dodge. Now within here, guys, we need one single copy. We're still waiting on one single copy of Brutus to actually have him maxed out. I finally got him up to um, the plus 35 signature item, so we've actually built him out quite a bit. We're sitting in all tier four gear. One more copy will be ascended. We can put furniture on him. One additional copy with adding the stars on there. So three um, awakened copies to add the stars will actually give him the engraving. I have the mats for him. We just need the copy. This again, awakened Brutus and awakened Thane are probably the two strongest um, PVP heroes that we see. Doing absolutely phenomenal within the Twister, or excuse me, the Cursed Realm as well. But PvP guys, they are the awakened gods of PvP. It's kind of crazy to see exactly how strong they are. Now, when we start getting here, we're pretty limited with the teams, guys. I run the awakened version of Aziz, and this is kind of a stall comp. Again, with the enemy being the same level that you are, this can work incredibly well. Of course, we know if Kelthar dies, he comes back as that spectral resurgent. We also do have Taylene. If she dies, she does come back. On um, Thorin, same, you have to kill Thorin twice, which means we are buying time for Flora to do a lot of damage. And we also do have this SP effect right here um, with Aziz. And Aziz, this is the only thing I use him for. I really regret building him out, especially to the level that we did, guys. We built him out super strong and we built him out super high. Um, ultimately, short of the PvP, the Treasure Scramble, I haven't used him for anything since he was released. Again, a little disappointed that we haven't had more opportunities for him to be actually um, utilized or even really shine. But overall, guys, again, he fits within this formation. He's gonna have crowd control giving Flora the stall time that we're looking for within here. Hopefully we can take down a couple targets. Again, it is super dependent on the team and the formations you're fighting in here onto what is going to work and what is going to work absolutely effectively. The final team, again, really kind of struggling with heroes, guys. This is a very strong comp. Of course, this is kind of the invade. Morio will actually keep everyone together on this side. We have Scrag, we have Anastout, we have Frampton, and we have the Awakened version of Taylene, which of course is not built up whatsoever. But this team in particular will keep everyone pretty much between one, two, and four, um, depending again on the team comp we're fighting. But having Anasta built out, guys. Now, Anasta has been a hero that she has proven time and time again to be absolutely um, imperative, Im important when it comes to team comps. She's made her way into a couple comps, the Cursed Realm comps. Um, this is a very strong formation because again, these four heroes will actually be stacked in this spot. Moreel, of course, will be bringing everyone together, doing quite a bit of damage, also giving some energy back to these heroes, which allows them to kind of super cycle. Scrag, of course, is gonna boost defense, the attack rating, and the energy regeneration of everyone on the enemy side, which is exactly what we want with this. Awaken Taylene again, you want to build out a little bit further. So looking here, guys, we have the Awakened version of Thane right in here, which, of course, super strong within there. We have the Awakened version of Brutus in here. We have the Awakened version of Aziz in here. We also do have the Awakened version of Taylene right in here. And I do not have the Awakened version. I don't even have one copy yet of the Awakened version of Solus, guys. But she would probably be one that I would drop into a formation somewhere. Again, the PvP specs, the treasure scrambles are super dependent on the heroes that you have built, um, really going with some of the stronger heroes that you have within your formation. Because essentially, if you have a hero that is not built out whatsoever versus a hero such as the Ainz comp that is very, very strong, Ainz is very well built, um, putting the teams in there that you have will be important um, because again, you have these heroes built out. I, I wouldn't put a very basic non-built out PVP hero in a spot where you know you could have a built out hero that you do have with that is completely built out with engraving things of that nature. So all right guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Seven teams within the Treasure Scramble gets absolutely crazy in here. So let me know in the comments what you guys think and as always, thank you guys for watching.